Oh, hello folks, it's uh, Ken David Stewart back again. Now, this may confuse a few people, but uh, I've actually included some an updated version of my play Roswell 1947. This one actually uh, comes after pages 39 and 40, and we could call this one uh, page 41 of Roswell 1947. So for those who have been following the more recent uh, postings I've had past uh, Roswell, page 39, this is what you're looking for. I've also gone back and included on a couple of different videos uh, the opening acts of people that aren't familiar with it could kind of catch up. And there's also a video that's called the Roswell 1947 Synopsis, which gives you an idea of what kind of happens in this play. Okay, let's continue with the video podcast from page 41. The narrator says, Before leaving court, Sheriff Pyle makes a phone call to Andy Griffith of the TV show fame. Andy, Sheriff Pyle says, Andy, Selmer Pyle, what are you up to? Andy, I'm on my way to the radio station to teach those two idiots, Dwight and Rick, some manners. Sheriff Pyle, well, maybe even put that on a hold for a little while, buddy. Look, I need a big favor from you, pal. Andy, no problem. You didn't charge me with three drunken disorderlies last week. Remember, this is all fiction, folks. I'm not talking about the real Andy Griffith. Anyway, Sheriff, I didn't want to do that, Andy. You're a hero to a lot of people in this town. Well, like I was saying, I need your help. I got four perps in custody. I have to book them into the hotel overnight, and I'll need some help supervising them until they can go to their court uh, meetings in the morning. Do you think you and Barney Fife could stand guard outside their rooms tonight? Andy, this sounds like real serious police work, Sheriff. Do you think you can get Barney and me some real law enforcement officer badges? Real ones, I mean. Not cheap, fake toy ones they give us for the show. Sheriff, yeah, I got a couple of spare ones in my desk. Andy, fantastic. How about FBI badges? You got any of those? Sheriff, no, you have to get those from J. Edgar Hoover. Andy, man, I always wanted to be a real cop, but they wouldn't let me because I had a long juvie record for stealing bikes and drinking underage. Sheriff, well, that's all behind you now, Andy. You're a grown man now and your juvenile record has been expunged. How about you and Barney meet me down at Dusty's Tavern in about half an hour? I'll pick up your uh, deputy badges at the office. Andy, hot diggity dog! We'll be there as soon as I can get a hold of Barney. He applied for the police force once too, but was turned down because he's so short. Act 9, Scene 4. Narrator. The sheriff and his prisoners arrive at the lobby of the Roswell Hotel. Andy Griffith and Barney Fife are already waiting for them. Just outside the hotel, a big black limousine pulls up. Hotel clerk says, Bellboy, the two famous lawyers from out of town have arrived. Help them bring their luggage in. Bellboy, Holy crow! It's Perry Mason and Matlock! Sheriff, Clerk, I need rooms for four prisoners. Hotel clerk, Prisoners? You came to the wrong place. This is a hotel, not a jail. Sheriff, we only have one cell in the jail in town. I'm not going to stick three men and one lady in the same cell. It's against the law. In fact, it's just not right. Hotel clerk, well, they're not staying here. This hotel has a reputation to uphold. Why don't you try the Holiday Inn in Albuquerque? Sheriff, have it your way. I'll just take a look in the bev beverage room while I'm here to see if there's any underage drinkers in there. If there are, I'll shut down your establishment. Hotel clerk. All, all right, the prisoners can stay. But I only have two rooms available. The two lawyers have the other rooms reserved. Sheriff. That's okay. The three male prisoners will take one room and the female can have a room to herself. General Kane. How many beds are in each room? Hotel clerk. Two, but we can bring in a cot for the third person. General Kane. Well, I'm a general, so I get one of the beds, Dr. Sorba. And I'm a doctor, so I get the other bed. The wrestler can have the cot. Mauler, why don't we have an arm wrestling contest to see who gets the beds? 
Sheriff, forget it. Tonight's sleeping arrangements have been finalized. Hotel clerk. Uh, none of these prisoners are violent, are they? Sheriff, all of them are extremely dangerous, but don't worry. I've hired special reinforcements. Andy Griffith and Deputy Barney, Barney Fife will be helping me guard the prisoners all night. Hotel clerk. Andy Griffith and Barney Fife? Those guys aren't real police, they're actors. Bellboy. Yeah, dude, this is real life, not a TV show. Andy. Watch the attitude, son. Sheriff Pyle just handed Deputy Fife and I official New Mexico State Trooper badges. Bellboy. Now let me get this straight. Andy Griffith and Barney are the police, and Perry Mason and Matlock are the lawyers. Sheriff, that's right. <laughs> Who's going to be the judge, Colonel Sanders? Sheriff, how'd you know? Bellboy, never mind. I got to take Mr. Mason and Mr. Matlock to their rooms. And I think we'll hold it for there for tonight. Continuation coming very soon.